We need a selfie. Can't wait. Snapchat. Welcome to the 2016 election. This is Dave Pierce. I'm Meow Ludo reporting for the Science Party. World Science Party. Yeah, woo! <laughs> Unreal. <laughs> Today, my job is to support the volunteers. They're going to be handing out how to vote cards for me all day, which can potentially triple my vote. So as long as I go along and support them, they're going to work on behalf of me. And the way that I'm saying thank you is to deliver them more hot pizzas, which is making all the other volunteers jealous. Welcome to the federal election 2016. And my name is Miao. I'm representing the Science Party. I'm the candidate. I've got some friends with me today. What made you decide to jump along and support the Science Party? Alicia. I'm really committed to the growth of DIY bio and biohacking in Australia. Um, I've been involved with um, the biohacking movement for the last year and a half. And um, generally, I'm really passionate about trying to build investment in science and technology in Australia and really evidence-based policy. So I really get behind what Science Party is trying to do. Um, we've actually got someone who's not an Australian citizen helping out today who is involved in the maker scene. Why do you think the maker scene is important and needs to be represented at a federal level? Um, wherever you are, wherever politics you are, I think like making science teaching uh, space, I think is important anywhere. Uh, so that's why I met Pigon today. And yeah, I hope you'll get elected. <laughs> and Gus, what brings you along today? Uh, basically, it seemed practical to me to uh, defer decisions to people based on experts in the field, essentially. Yeah, I think it's important that we actually listen to what the experts say, especially when we're commissioning reports like on West Connects and then completely ignore them. He says, like, how do you feel about energy? I'm like, what's your opinion on coal seam gas? And he goes, yeah, I'm unequivocally for it. <laughs> I'm like, all right, <laughs> let's have a talk. <laughs> we know that having volunteers on how to vote booths triples our vote, which is huge. And that could take us from 1.5% to 4%. And that's why you guys are out here. Thank you very much for taking the time out. If anyone hassles you, please let us know. Yeah. First election, it's actually really exciting, hey. Like, it's a, it's a really different feeling than I thought it would be. I wasn't that excited. And then last night, I just got, like, completely overwhelmed with the <laughs> fact that I'm going to be going for a federal seat tomorrow it's exciting like of course my friends are going to support me and stuff but when you're meeting other people out there which are like like last night when I was putting up core flutes this lady hadn't heard of our party and I said I'm from the science party and she's like I'm a biochemist my husband's a doctor we didn't know about you guys you have my vote straight up they have friends that have lost jobs in the CSIRO and, and they thank you for representing them which is fantastic because like obviously my party represents me the best, but there's other people out there that also feel the same way. I told him I was with Science Party and he just started shaking me. <laughs> he grabbed me with both of his hands and started shaking me, saying, thank you, thank you, thank you. I tell every young person who's getting into science, don't get into science, get into politics because we need federal funding. And he's like, you did it. I didn't even know your party existed. And when I saw you on the Senate, I um, put you number one straight away. You know, when CSIRO gets its funding cut and 600 jobs go, there's a newspaper article about it, but there's no people really jumping up and down and screaming. One of the scientists got fired, or got made redundant, and just continued in his job. And then he just goes, what else am I gonna do? Like, I, this is my entire life, 25 years into a job, focusing on one specialty. Mm. I can't go overseas, I have to just keep on doing what I'm doing. So he just goes to work for free. <laughs> and like, I don't see like Malcolm Turnbull going to go to work for free or like a tradie going to work for free and they have no worries getting at their job but the scientist gets made redundant and they just keep on working because it needs to be done. Those scientists don't come back easily. If you fire those scientists and they can't get a job in Australia, they'll go overseas and you'll have to contract them back if they're willing to come. Seeing as it's our coalition partners. We're on the best coalition part. That's it, right here. Boom, the best coalition. Okay. G'day, Paul Parkins. Thank you. In order to take this lad on. Well, you know, you can do your best, Pat. But, you know. Hey, how you going? Meow, we're going to start. Thank you, Ben. 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 Thank you, Ben.
Hey, you going? I've seen the name, it's funny. Thank you. Come for the name. We're going to go for beers after this. Science party, sex party, take a pick. The sillier the name, the more intelligent the camera. Oh, is it? I've got Anthony Green's support, so I'm doing all right. He loves it. He posted my reaction if I get it. He's like, oh, it's the story behind your name. You have to wait till the after party. We're quite lucky with Science Party because we have a candidate in the seat of Greenway. And he's. Indian, he speaks Hindi, so he's gotten heaps of coverage, not just uh, from the local papers, but then through SBS radio on the Hindi station. He's got a whole heap of coverage about him in India, All right. because he's an Indian running in Australian politics, mm -hmm. and they think that's awesome. So his, his profile picture right now is of a paper in India. <laughs> Because he's so excited to be running. And he's, he's got a really good story. His son has a rare genetic mutation called FOXG1. So it's actually a deletion of one of the genes. So that gene is just not in his kid's body. So he can't make that protein. It has all sorts of developmental disadvantages. And any major chromosomal abnormality is really bad news. You can live a, a, a normal life depending on where it is. It looks like um, Vivek's son isn't going to do the best. His name's Kush. And he's campaigning to get more awareness for this. He's also contacted biohackers before and tries and just raises as much awareness as possible. His son was actually the first person in Sydney to ever be diagnosed with it and they think there's only about, there might be 30 in Australia. It's a really rare condition but um, he does very well because he's got so much passion personally and he has, he has such a great narrative as well. It's really nice to be able to say like, I'm not a scientist but I understand how, why science is important and how it, how it can help us. Fucking, how's that? Albo DJing. I bet you he DJs fucking Psytrance. Because <laughs> <laughs> no. I was a raver. I still am a raver. And a lot of people kind of like talk you down and say you'll never make anything of yourself. And people I, I've met in the rave scene now have PhDs. I'm running for parliament. There's doctors, lawyers, all sorts of people came out of there. And a lot of the time they got a lot of confidence and a feeling of empowerment from being in the rave scene. It's pretty accepting. So one of the rave DJs that was at my first rave in 2003 is actually out campaigning for me tonight. And he does it because he says that a lot of the kids that come along to raves don't have a lot of confidence when they first start and they're a bit out of place. And by him putting on raves, he hopes that he inspires them to go and do cool things by feeling a sense of unity with other ravers. And he thinks what I do in science and in politics is fantastic because it shows them hope and that you can go on to do amazing things. So I make sure to come to all the raves, we've done some stands with them and hopefully we're going to do some political raves. Hi Mia. Hello, how are you going? <laughs> what is your stance on environmental protection? Uh, our stance is an evidence-based policy. So we believe in asking professionals and scientists what they think is best practice and then implementing that regardless of ideology. So some of the bigger parties and some of the older parties might pick it based on donations or uh, what aligns with their ideological views. We would base it solely on scientific evidence and on the weight of the evidence. That sounds fair. It's strange, that, isn't it? <laughs> it it's not always... Far too fair for politics. It, it's not always comfortable, though, because sometimes the solutions are not what people Wanted. like. And one of the, so one of the big differences that we have with the Greens, for example, is we are willing to talk about nuclear power, and that's something that the Greens can't do. Okay. Um, it's something that the Labor Party and Liberal Parties aren't interested in because they are into coal. We're yeah. not into coal, but we want to make As sure... As a vegan, I'm also not into coal. Yeah, coal is terrible. Um, also, um, when we think about nuclear power, we also have to think about where that comes from, and that's Aboriginal land. So we have a strong platform of treaty, and we think it's time to rewrite the Constitution, become a republic, and sit down with the Indigenous Australians and write a document that really defines us as a country. Yeah, that's awesome. I fucked the plane off. <laughs> British! <laughs> well, any politician can chuck you a whole heap of rhetoric, but when is the person who is directly impacted by that, you can go up in front of a crowd and say, no, you didn't, this isn't what you stand for, that actually means something. And people in the crowd agree with you. They know that people are talking shit. And it's funny because all the other all the other candidates laugh at that person too and say you you're not what you say you are. Mm. Um, you can't be say you're about jobs and growth when we know the best way to increase 
GDP is just through education. Like, you can take your population and without growing anything more, without sending, selling any minerals or resources, just by education, you can increase GDP. It doesn't have to take a toll on the environment. It's by producing technology. We can sell education. And when someone campaigns saying that they're going to give you a job and they're going to grow the economy and they do the exact opposite as a scientist, you get pretty pissed off to the point that you end up having to run in a fucking federal election. <laughs> Which is ridiculous. I should be doing fucking science. So now we're on our way to Roselle. I was at this booth at 8 a.m., we got a pretty good response. There's a poor volunteer who's been starving there waiting for us because delivering pizzas took a lot longer than expected. It looks like we're going to be finished around 3, 3.30 and then I'll be able to start campaigning at Stanmore. It's been fun. I get to jump into all of the all of the voting booths just briefly, but I get to kind of touch down on every part of the electorate, which is really fun. I'm really keen to get to Stanmore though because that's kind of the heart of Grandler and it's... A, one of the most heavily campaigned green seat, uh, green booths, so that'll be lots of fun. And I am looking forward to this being over and being at the after party and being able to have a drink with all of them. It's going to be lots of fun. And it's my birthday. Ah, tonight at midnight, I turned 32, one year younger than Albo was when he took the seat. So who knows? Maybe I will clean up. And if not, I'll at least give it a pretty good go.